Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, Wally Renee here and join me as we go beyond the scan and kind of discover what you could do after you get that digital data from your scanner and you throw it into Romexis or any other software and you start doing some amazing things with it. So upon request, you guys want to know about Model Analyzer. So here we are in Romexis 6 and I have a patient selected and all the information is there with that patient. I do have some model analyzer cases that I've done on this patient, um, all these separate ones. All you do to get back in is you would double click the, um, the 3D file and it would instantly open up in model analyzer. So that's one way that you could get a 3D file into model analyzer. The other way, and here you can see the case is ready, imported in and ready to be worked on. And there's several things that you could do in model analyzer that we'll go into in just a minute. The other thing that you could do is scan natively in the model analyzer software. This is a particularly important for orthodontists who don't do anything with crown and bridge and they don't want to click a tooth and then select the shade and then select the material. They just want to go right into scanning, right? So by um, clicking scan in model analyzer, it will open up the scan tab instantly and you could go right to scanning. So there's no need to pick what you're doing or anything like that. And you have the upper, lower, and the bites. And so a lot of orthodontists who have the Emerald S just use this for scanning. And they scan right in Model Analyzer. And once you would scan in the Model Analyzer, the data would be instantly available to go ahead and do your kind of ortho light work. But here I'm gonna import some ply files from a case that I did. And I'm gonna find those on the download folder here. It takes STL, it takes ply, it takes OBJ. So if you want the color, ply and OBJ are typically the color files. Um, I do recommend working with color model analyzer because uh, in a minute I'll show you, you would get a lot of really cool kind of photorealistic views. And so I selected those ply files and now they're going to pop into the software. And the first thing that the software asks you to do is select the model orientation, basically defining the occlusal plane. And to do that, it's really quite easy. I like to select the three points, which is this icon I'll show you right here. You just um, default is selected on, so select that. And you could turn off your lower by selecting the lower model. I click my molar cusp tip, my central incisor edge, and my contralateral molar cusp tip, and that's it. And so you can see when I turn on the lower, you got a nice occlusal plane. So. Once that's done and the orientation set, it throws you into this workspace where you get to do uh, all sorts of things. Um, one thing that you could do is you can erase extraneous data from the intraoral scan. So sometimes when you scan, if you don't erase it natively in the scan tab, which is probably the best way to do it, you could erase it here. Also, you could look at the model and all these uh, cool views. So by clicking the kind of, it looks like a photo deck, you get these six kind of views that orthodontists often take photos in. And so it might eliminate the need to make intraoral photos if you have the ability to get, get really nice color scans and then set them all up in the appropriate orientations instantly with the click of a button for the patient's electronic health record. But here I'm uh, at the eraser tool here and I'm just removing some weird stuff that maybe I accidentally scanned. I will say the software engine has been dramatically improved to automatically eliminate the extraneous data from scanning. Um, this model was scanned using the older version of the scan engine, so we didn't get the kind of nice, crisp, clean edges that come out of the software these days. Um, so super cool stuff, though, to be able to erase. And you... You just want to make sure that you don't have any kind of weird ripples or folds or anything in your model. And this is going to be important later when we go ahead and get these ready for 3D printing and we make solid models or hollow models. Okay, the other thing that's really neat in the model analyzer feature is the occlusal analysis. And I click that little occlusal icon there and I like to drag the slider all the way to about 20 microns and you get a really good indication of the patient's occlusion during maximum intercuspation. So you could see that we have some really cool heat marks. I am getting really nice bites with the, the software. I know some users struggle with that. I don't necessarily know why. 
haven't been able to figure that out, but I, I tend to get really, really good articulations of the jaws. So I'm going back into this really cool view. And um, so really quick, the next step is to go ahead and at this point, if you were doing restorative or whatever, you could go ahead and create a ho hollow or a solid model. Two is for a two millimeter wall thickness of your 3D printed um, model. So you go ahead and hit that. And the software is going to power through an algorithm and it's gonna generate a model for you to print. All right, look at how beautiful that is. So now we have a perfectly hollow model ready for 3D printing flat on the build platform um, in most cases. Sometimes you have to do some small modifications, but I actually don't like printing hollow. Um, I always print solid. And I like printing solid for several reasons. One is you don't get the kind of suction effect from having a hollow model. Um, you wind up wasting a lot of resin anyway when they're hollow because it gets trapped inside unless you put drain ports, but even then a lot of it still gets trapped and you wind up washing it off later anyway. I also tend to have a higher rate of failure with hollow models and then sometimes even breaking them off of the build platform they, they could crack. Um, I just, I don't find the $2 savings or dollar savings worth it. So I always print solid. Let me turn off what you're seeing with that palatal bump is the other model, so I'm going to turn that off. So here's the solid model ready for 3D printing, and that is a flat plane that you can put on the build platform. So I always like to print solid. Those little hole areas are from uh, where I didn't really clean up the edges of the model that well, but they will still print perfectly fine. So that's looking good. Um, what else can you do with this software now? <clears throat> there's some ortho things that you could do, so um, like Bolton analysis, two size, arch size um, analyses. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the byte into this kind of open tab. Click tooth number two because they're missing. All right, so you can see that I'm just clicking um, each tooth. The true tooth mesiodistal width, not looking at the tooth in the arch form, but just looking at the teeth individually. Um, trying to find out their actual mesial distal width, which will come in important later when we look at arch size and we compare the two differences with discrepancy. So now I'm going to go down to the bottom and click number 18, and then I'm going to just power through um, measuring those on the lower. And you could rotate the model at any given time during this measurement stage to get a better view of the mesial distal surfaces to which you want to drop those pins and you can see they hang out in space as it drops the skeleton in the air, um, kind of a 2D ladder that you could then look at the measurements and also create some snapshots later on should you need it for your electronic health record. So really quickly, we're just, you know, I remember when my ortho residents uh, in the, the university here, the ortho residents who are doing this with calipers and rulers and stuff like that, spending like hours measuring an arch when they some of the tech savvy ones just use model analyzer and they power through it with digital technology and they do it in about a tenth of the time I would imagine than what they were doing. So now we have the two size analysis and now we're going to go to the next tab which is the arch size and it's through the mesial contact point of the first molar and this you're kind of splitting the differences of the ideal arch form here um, and ignoring extreme variances and you're going to go to the mesial contact on the contralateral side of the first molar. Click on and off. So you click it off and then click it back on and then you're going to do the lower. And when you click it off, it saves it. Click it back on, it wants a new measurement from the lower. And you can see that skeleton is taller than the um, tooth measurement skeleton and it's blue color. All your measurements are down at the bottom. What you could do with this is you could just click and all, instantly it's going to do your Bolton analysis, including the anterior ratio. It's also going to do space analysis for the upper arch and space analysis for the lower arch, all um, instantly measured and calculated for you, um, which is really cool. And um, we, we do, at least I do, I use this all the time for any uh, cases that I'm going to do clear liners on just to get a quick, a quick idea of tooth size, arch size discrepancies and things like that and how much space I'm going to need to gain. Um, you could just save the wireframes. You could put the wireframes on your stone models. There's the kind of the sky's the limit as to the views um, that you could have, even like this, you could have all the measurements saved from the various different angles. 
just click the camera icon, it puts it right into the 2D module. So that's pretty much Model Analyzer in a nutshell. It's super easy to use. Um, once again, to get models out, just hit the export icon and save them to a folder and it's gonna save everything um, for you to 3D print and, and whatnot. So really simple and I hope you learned exactly what Model Analyzer is for. It's so that you don't have to put your models in Mesh Mixer and hollow and base. So that's what I meant by death of Mesh Mixer. Thanks guys.